Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 83 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to share with you about magnesium. Now, here's the thing with magnesium. Anytime you've got a health issue, it's one of the first things that people will recommend that you take. And when it comes to your skin, magnesium is very important. But here's the thing. The form that you take does matter, and it should be specific to your symptoms and issues at hand. Because this is a little bit complicated, I figured I would break this episode into two parts. So today we're going to solely focus on topical magnesium. Is it the best option for you and what may be a better form than another more commonly recommended option? But first I wanted to share a few of the benefits. Here's the thing, magnesium is critical to the proper functioning of your body, especially on a biochemical level. In fact, it's necessary in over 300 biochemical reactions in your body. It can help you relax. It can help you wind down at night and fall asleep. It can actually wake you up during the day. It can reduce muscle cramps and restless leg syndrome, and it can also help you poop. One of the first suggestions that people will commonly make, especially if you're in like a Facebook group online, is to try magnesium oil because there can be gastrointestinal side effects to certain forms of magnesium when taken orally. Magnesium oil seems like a much less risky version of magnesium. And yes, it is actually absorbed through the skin. But there's a couple of problems that I have with magnesium oil. The first issue has to do with the fact that if you are truly deficient in magnesium, which I often find in clients, you don't really know how much magnesium you're getting into your system. So it can be difficult to know if how much you are absorbing is adequate, not just to help support your body on a daily basis, but also to begin filling up those wells that have run dry. The second issue has to do with this side effect of using magnesium oil where it can cause your skin to become either itchy or it'll burn. I don't know about you, but the idea of making my skin itchier or to cause it to burn is really not ideal because one of the issues that we oftentimes have with itchy skin issues is that you don't want to start scratching because once you start to scratch, it can be difficult to stop. And that's why I don't recommend people use topical magnesium oil because A, you don't know how much you're getting, and B, it can trigger what feels like a rash or a flare when in actuality, it's the oil itself. As far as my research online as to why the oil may cause a burning or itching sensation, nobody's really sure. There are some people that will say that your skin will have this reaction if you're actually deficient in magnesium, but there is literally no science to back that up. The second option, which seems slightly more plausible, but again, no one's really sure, is that there is a substantial difference in pH between that of the skin and the type of magnesium that is used in these magnesium oil products. As you guys may remember, Your skin's pH should be at around 4.5. That would be the healthy pH of the skin. Well, we know that when dysbiosis happens at the level of the skin, so where the skin microbiome gets off, we may end up with leaky skin. One facet of this is that the skin's pH changes. So that's kind of interesting. However, the type of magnesium used in these sprays and oil products tends to be magnesium chloride, which according to some articles I found states that it's around a 7.5 pH, right? So this is a pretty substantial jump between 4.5 and 7.5. Whereas other more scientific articles that I read cited that magnesium chloride is actually closer to a pH of six. So it's not quite as substantial of a pH change, but it is still pretty significant because even though it only sounds like 4.5 to six, not a big jump, actually on pH terms, that is a pretty sizable leap. 
Now, here's the cool thing. Magnesium sulfate, which is an Epsom salt, is a little bit closer to the natural skin pH. So it's around 5.5 to maybe 6.5. But again, that may be why Epsom salt baths do not seem to trigger this reaction that magnesium oil does. So my suggestion, ditch the magnesium oil. Don't use it, especially if it does cause itching and burning and is potentially causing you to then itch your skin and feel increasingly more uncomfortable. And definitely don't spray it directly onto rashes because that does not sound like a great combo if you're essentially just irritating the area. What I would suggest to try is a magnesium bath that utilizes Epsom salt in warm water. You can also add some colloidal oats and even some of your favorite oil to the water. Not a whole lot because you don't want to clog up your drain, but you can use a little drizzle on top to help support your skin. Maybe some avocado oil, some hemp seed oil, or maybe even some jojoba. The magnesium from the bath will absolutely be absorbed, but again, we have no idea exactly how much is being absorbed. So if you know for sure from working with a clinical nutritionist, a functional doctor, or you just know from having your own testing run that magnesium seems to be low, the ideal situation is, yes, using magnesium baths to help support this process of filling up the wells, but also taking some sort of oral supplementation that's right for you in order to get the magnesium back into your system. I'm going to discuss this at length in part two of this episode all about magnesium. So stay tuned for that, especially if you've had trouble in the past taking magnesium and it's triggered all sorts of GI side effects like diarrhea that you were not anticipating and that obviously were not ideal. Magnesium can be a wonderful thing, but you've got to make sure that you're taking the right form for you. And it also depends on the time of day when you take certain forms. I'll go through all of that for you in the next episode. If you have any questions or you want to check out some of the resources that I looked at, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 083 to take a look at the show notes. If you've had any experience with magnesium oil, I would love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments for this episode. And you know what to do. Head on over to your podcast platform of choice rate, review, and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't have to do anything. The next episodes will just land right on your mobile device. You can stream them whenever you have a moment. And as always, one of the things I ask you guys is to share this information with someone you know, whether it's a person or a community of people that need to know that there are other options out there for them to try. Sharing is a critical piece to us expanding this movement of demanding better for our skin. As always, I deeply appreciate you tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.